So you're thinking about setting up a, a planted aquarium of some kind. Maybe you've seen a cool looking aquarium at your uh, local aquarium or local pet store, or you've, you've seen one of the many cool uh, aquariums online and you wanted to uh, set something up that looks absolutely amazing incorporating live plants, rocks, and, and driftwood, and you want to learn how. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up an easy beginner tank so that you won't fail at setting up a planted tank and you'll set up a successful tank that you can enjoy for years to come. And another key to success is uh, putting in good plants for uh, beginners that don't require CO2 injection or the highest end lights or anything like that uh, and ensuring that they will grow and that your scape will continue looking uh, amazing uh, for years to come. You're also gonna wanna pick out you know, the right fish uh, and ensure that you have a great substrate and that your plants have a great nutrient system to hook into to uh, continue to grow and pull nutrients from. So this tank right here is a uh, three gallon tank. This is a rimless tank that I got, I think about four or five years ago, but a, a good uh, tank, very similar size that you can pick out. Uh, Aquion makes a five gallon aquarium for very, very cheap. Uh, I'll put a link to that tank down uh, in the video description. So if you guys wanna pick one up, Petco sells them, like basically any place that sells uh, aquariums will sell a five gallon tank, I think. They sell it for about 15 or 20 bucks. Very cheap, uh, easy aquarium that you can place right on a desk like this one is right here. Uh, and that you can, you know, you can place it anywhere and it's very cheap, easy to set up in any apartment or house. So now the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, set up our nutrient layer. And for that, you're going to need to use some aqua soil. And this is just, uh, I'm not sure exactly how they make it, but it's a uh, nutrient rich, you know, plant substrate that comes in these little balls. And what you're gonna wanna do to, so that it doesn't leach into your uh, decorative sand layer is you're gonna want to get one of these uh, bags. These bags are very cheap on Amazon. I think you can get a six pack of these guys for like five bucks on Amazon. They're, they're with plastic zippers. Uh, I'll leave a link to uh, the bags as well down in the description. And you're just gonna wanna fill this bag up about halfway with aqua soil uh, to then put in the tank and have a nice nutrient layer that all your plants can uh, reach into and use. There we go, the bag is about halfway full. And the reason we wanna uh, only fill the bag up about halfway is that when we set it down uh, flat, the aqua soil won't be nearly as tall and will allow us to uh, put decorative sand over top of it and not have you know a substrate bed that's you know eight or nine inches deep and now you don't have any swim room for your fish. So you're gonna wanna place that in your tank, you know, right about where your plants are going to be. So I'm just placing it right in the center. And now we're going to put our decorative sand right over top of it. So for your decorative sand, you can use, you know, whatever color uh, aquarium sand you like, and you can even use uh, play sand or pool filter sand, which can be very, which can be cheaper and uh, look really good. I've used them in uh, plenty of tanks, but I just had this sand laying around, so I'm gonna uh, use this uh, specific, it's a grayer type of sand, and I think it'll look really good in this jungle style scape. You're gonna want your, your sand to sort of slope back to sort of give a more bigger perception of depth. And you're gonna need to make sure that anywhere that you're planting, you're gonna, you're gonna want at least, you know, like a, a half inch to an inch of planting depth. So you're gonna wanna, you know, go right up to right about your first knuckle. So right about there or so of planting depth. And that'll give your plants enough sand to hook into. So for a jungle tank, we're gonna want uh, the majority of our tank to be plants because uh, plants will help uh, filter the water and having lots of them will mitigate uh, any potential algae that we're going to have. But we still do want to add a, a little bit of hardscape. So for that, I'm using this little piece of Malaysian bogwood that I've had laying around. It's really cool. I think it will add a lot of interest. Uh, and it, you know, you can stand it up and it'll have like a little archway type cave thing. So I'm just gonna stick this, you know, right in the middle of the tank, probably more forward. Sort of just like that. And now we sort of have an instant hardscape. Uh, now uh, I am going to add in a couple of little stones also around it 
mostly so we can glue down this piece of wood so it doesn't float up and destroy our whole hardscape. So if we just leave the wood the way it is, uh, it is definitely going to float up and ruin this whole scape. But there are ways to lock the wood down to the rocks, which definitely won't float. And uh, my favorite is using this uh, cyanoacrylate super glue gel. And all you do is you're going to take uh, a couple of dollops of this and glue it onto the contact points between the rocks and the wood. And this will prevent the wood from floating up. Uh, this glue, when it dries, is completely inert. It's like a plastic. and it will not harm your fish or shrimp or plants or anything else that ends up going in this tank. I've used it uh, loads of times and loads of other people have used it and it is perfectly safe and a great option to uh, keep your hardscape in place. Alrighty, so now uh, our glue, it uh, now our wood is glued down, and it'll hopefully not float up when we end up filling this tank up. Alrighty, now before we start planting, uh, we need to add in our filter and our heater. So for our filter, we're using this little sponge filter, and sponge filters are really cheap uh, filters. This one I think was like five bucks or something like that. I'll leave a link to it uh, down in the description below if you guys want to check it out. But it's a very cheap filtration method, and I think perfect for very small tanks like this one. And our heater is a, a little preset, I think a Tetra or Aquion heater uh, that I bought at Petco. Uh, also very cheap, um, nothing fancy, very easy, and just keeps the water at a constant, I think 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Just gonna stick them right into this back corner back here so they're easy to maintain and clean when need be. Just like that. Alrighty, so I've got all our plants laid out. So some are right here and others are right over here. So yes, I know it looks like a lot of plants, but uh, you're definitely gonna wanna spend the vast majority of your money uh, on your plants because they are the key to success. Uh, with a lot of plants, they will eat up a lot of nutrients and they will prevent algae and they give your fish interest and cover. So definitely uh, as many plants as you can afford, you should buy and they will astronomically increase your chances of having a very, very successful tank. All right, so first we're going to add in our epiphyte plants. And for that, we're gonna be using these uh, Anubius species that I have. I'm not quite sure which one they are. All Anubius, their care is pretty much the same. You, uh, you do not plant them into the substrate. Instead, you glue these down onto uh, pieces of rock or wood. You wanna ensure that this little rhizome bit right here does not uh, go into the soil because if it does, then your plant will die. Uh, these are very, very easy plants to grow, like all the plants that I have picked out. So to attach this Anubias to our hardscape, we're going to be using our glue again. And we're just going to place some little dollops on places where we want the Anubias. And then we'll hold uh, the actual plant down for about uh, 10 seconds to, to get the plant to hold in place. So now we're gonna be adding in our different foreground uh, plants. And for that, I've got a whole bunch of uh, different crypt species, including crypt parva, crypt wendatai, and I, uh, there's a couple others. I can't quite remember what species I have, but I'll pop them up on the, on the screen as I plant them. And they're gonna go in the foreground and they won't get very big. They will sp sort of spread out and add a whole bunch of uh, green to the front of the tank. Now we're gonna add in our background plants. And for that, we're gonna be using a bunch of this uh, dwarf sage and uh, all these assorted uh, stem plants right over here. And these stem plants I pulled out of this uh, fish bowl that I set up. So they will not need to sort of adjust in, uh, and convert from immersed to underwater growth. And these are all uh, very easy to grow as well. I can't quite remember which stems I've got, but I'll pop up 
uh, their names as well on the screen as I'm planting them. And these will all go uh, in the background of the tank behind the hardscape. And the stems especially are very good because they grow very quickly and they pull a lot of nutrients out of the uh, water column and really help keep that tank clean. There we go, the tank is now uh, completely planted. Uh, now we can fill this thing up. You can see all the plants I've got back there. Yeah, now we're gonna fill this thing up with some water uh, and we can then we can affix our light and then we'll be all done. Now we're gonna rig up our uh, light, and the light that we're using is this little clip-on LED uh, light from Topfin, I think, makes it. It's very cheap, I think I bought it for 15 bucks or something like that. I'll leave a link to this uh, in the description as well if you wanna check it out, and I think it's a really good light. It's the same light that I have uh, on this tank, and as you can see, it is a jungle in there, and this is after I trimmed out a bunch of plants from there, so this thing really grows plants well, in my opinion. Uh, and the growth just uh, speaks for itself as, as to how well uh, everything that it grows plants. So we're gonna hook it up real quick. There we go. And as you can see, you know, pretty powerful a light that we've got and it should grow the, these plants uh, pretty well because none of them really require that high of a light. Alrighty, so now we're gonna need to add in all the things that are really going to make this tank successful and uh, those are, are obviously our water conditioner, our beneficial bacteria, and some fertilizer. So the first thing we're going to add in is our uh, water conditioner and this is to remove all the chlorine and, and stuff like that that's in the water that's harmful to the fish and plants. So we don't need very much of this. Uh, it's very potent. So that much should be plenty. And now we're gonna add in our beneficial bacteria to kickstart our nitrogen cycle. Uh, this all this is all beneficial bacteria that um, neutralizes ammonia and turns it into nitrite and then turns that nitrite into nitrate, which is much safer. And the plants will all pull out a lot of the nitrates that we have. We're gonna add in about three milliliters of this stuff. There we go. And uh, all our plants, since they all came from uh, established tanks, they do have beneficial bacteria already uh, on them, but that'll uh, really seed the soil uh, and sand and filter. And now we're gonna add in our leaf zone, uh, which is a fertilizer, which will really help the plants uh, settle in while their root systems find that aqua soil layer down below. And for this, we're going to need, I think about a milliliter or so. There we go. Now we're gonna let this thing settle in for about a day before we add in our fish. Alrighty, so the tank has now been running for uh, about a day and now we're going to add in our fish that we are going, that are going to call this tank home. So here are the fish that we're gonna be adding in. There's uh, six little um, chili rasboras in here. Uh, they were previously in the tank when I had it set up with uh, solely crypts and they've been hanging out in this little 15 gallon um, temporary holding tank for for a while there's really nothing in here that's just bare bottom a couple of very algae covered plants some serious stone and a sponge filter and heater but that's really all they needed while they were in here while i was uh rescaping their tank so they've only been in here you know for maybe a week or so but now i'm gonna pull them out and move them back into their uh new home and along with uh those chili rasboras i've got uh two cherry shrimp that have been hanging out with them in here that I'm going to add in as well. Alrighty, so our rasboras have now uh, acclimated and now I'm going to catch them out and introduce them into their new home.
Alrighty, so it seems like our fish are settling in straight away. They're all right over here, schooling up, all right in the back. And our shrimp are all right there as well. Everything looks really, really nice. They're all a little bit stressed, but schooling together really nicely. And I think they're going to really enjoy this uh, tank, especially as it grows in more and more. And as we get more of that jungle uh, look and more of the tank gets hidden by the plants. So, and you might be asking yourself, well, what, what about this, the nitrogen cycle? Why am I adding fish almost straight away without giving time for the nitrogen cycle to, you know, do its thing? And the answer to that is, well, I'm doing what is called a fish-in cycle, where the fish um, are added in and they provide the, the nutrients to kickstart the nitrogen cycle. And I will be making a, a video on that with this tank on how to do a fish in cycle. So if you're interested uh, in that, then be sure to uh, subscribe. Uh, and that video will be coming out probably in a, in a month or so uh, after you see this one, maybe sooner. Oh, I will see, but the whole process will take just about a month and it involves lots of testing the water and water changes. Uh, so I just don't like having empty tanks sitting around. I would much rather have fish in the tanks and there is this method that exists, so I uh, figured that I would might as well use it, and I'll show you guys how to do it as well. So thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.